We're going to move on to uh, ask uh, Rosemary. I've asked her to very quickly just kind of give a broad, a broad overview. I think particularly those of you who have been involved in the centers in the past uh, know that Rosemary does a multifaceted approach to, to communicating uh, positive outcomes of IPM. And, and Rose, Rose, so Rosemary is just going to give a, a broad overview of, of that aspect now. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I will tell you that there's probably more detail on the slides than what I'm going to actually talk about. I do, um, although I'm busy all day, I do two main things. I communicate with um, the outside world through email, and I communicate to an unseen audience through the internet with blogs and uh, social media. So um, some of those up there are <clears throat> some of the ways, you know, the, the individual ways that I do that with um, listservs and I update contact information and send out individual emails. Um, and then the Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest are our social media sites. And then we have four blogs. Uh, next slide. So outreach basically um, means two things. We have what I call the old-fashioned outreach, which is send press releases to the media, and then we have the updated outreach, which is um, the blogs and social media. The old-fashioned outreach goes to agricultural magazines and newspapers, um, in the university communication departments, and then um, I can't tell you who the uh, the social media stuff comes goes to. It seems to hit an audience that we will we just don't reach on an everyday basis. So I started a Pinterest site um, basically to hit a lot of people who have no knowledge of IPM whatsoever, and that's fairly new. Um, the other ones we've had for probably about a year, and you can see kind of what we do in, in each of the blogs. Uh, the next slide shows some of the sample topics for our main blog. Um, I don't want to say it's an opinion blog, because it's not really what it does. It's a topic-centered blog. And then what I'll do is I'll take a, an article that I've seen and then summarize it. And then um, in the next slide, the press releases will concern either projects that we funded or things that I find out of, uh, of other things that are going on in the region. Maybe it's uh, an interesting IPM project going on at uh, University of Tennessee or Auburn, or I did an article for our blog a couple of weeks ago on uh, EdMaps, which is part of Bugwood. So um, the project-centered press releases will actually go out to the media. The other ones, um, typically I use them for, my, for our blog. So they, they do get uh, distributed, and a lot of times I have the blogs all set up to go directly to Twitter. And there are a couple of editors from Farm Press who follow us on Twitter. And so I've seen some of our articles that I've not sent them appear in some of the Farm Presses. So it seems to be working. And that's it. So uh, particularly the people new to the center might not know this. I think a lot of you already do know it. You know. Uh, well, you know, football season has started. Uh, we're getting the, the news. The sports page is talking about all the, what's going on with the Duke and UNC and NC State football teams, and and every now and then they mention this person called the glue guy, the person that's kind of behind the scenes and m maybe doesn't always, uh, you know, get the pass or make the big play, but it's the important person that keeps the team together. Rosemary's our glue guy. Uh, if you really want to get something done, uh, or if you really need to make something known to us, Rosemary's the one that is always paying attention. What she didn't mention, she said she had two audiences. What she didn't mention was the third audience was that she frequently walks down the hall and is nudging or poking or beating me with a baseball bat to, to, to do important things. So uh, if you really need something from the center and you're not getting it from Henry or Joe or me, Go to Rosemary. 
she will take care of you.